Professor Tom Solomon joins us, the director of the UK's Health Protection Research Unit in Emerging Infections at the University of Liverpool. So not only is this your main subject, but they're coming to your neighbourhood. That's right, yes. These people are uh, being looked after, going to be looked after at Arrow Park Hospital, which is not far from where we are at the moment. And when you say looked after, will there be nurses attending to them or will they be simply shut away in this accommodation block and left for two weeks? Well, my understanding is that they won't need any nursing care because they're, they're well, but I mean more that they will be monitored. And then if any of them are unwell or have a fever, at that point, that's when some action will be taken. Well, they could have a fever for other reasons. So how will you then determine what the fever is? Well, it, it, it's, I should point out, it's not me involved in the, in the care of these I know people. That, yeah. but what, what I imagine will happen is that if anyone does have a fever, they'll be tested for the coronavirus and uh, testing is available through Public Health England. And then if they test positive, I imagine that they will be transferred to one of the high containment units. There, there are four in the country uh, that can look after this type of patient. And one of them is here in Liverpool at the Royal Liverpool University Hospital. But, but uh, yes, but if there's a test, then why not test them straight off the plane? Yeah, it's an interesting question. But um, the thing is, if you test everybody straight off the plane uh, and they're negative, that, that could be give false reassurance. And you, you've just been talking about people who might say, oh, actually, I've had enough. I want out of here. So um, the approach is to test people when they probably to test people when they have symptoms. We've not we've not heard the exact details from Public Health England, but normally the approach would be to test people as soon as they have any symptoms. The, I've heard it said as well that whatever, wherever you take people who may be at risk from having this, they mustn't go near a hospital because a hospital is where you get the very old and the very young. You get the frailest people. Now, I know it's an accommodation block and it's set apart, but it's got the word hospital in it. And is it not surprising that we've done this? Um I, I mean, this is a, it's an accommodation block. It's on a hospital site. But yeah. these, people are, these people are in quarantine. So if your quarantine is working, then it shouldn't really matter where the quarantine is because they're going to be cut off from the general public. But, but health, workers, you, you, health workers in China got it, even though they were all masked and gloved up. Yeah, I think that's a different situation because in China you're talking about a hospital where you have sick patients who are unwell and they're excreting the virus. What we're talking about here is a quarantine situation where you've got completely healthy people who are just being monitored and as soon as they have any sign of illness and it's confirmed to be the coronavirus, then they'll be put in an isolation facility. So I do think it makes a lot of sense to have the quarantine unit not too far from one of the isolation uh, hospitals. And if it was the other way around, of course, you'd be saying to me, well, isn't it bonkers to have your patients quarantined hundreds of miles away from where they need to be if they become unwell? Well, they could easily have been quarantined at their own homes, couldn't they, if, if we could have trusted them to stay in a single room? Well, I think that's a, that's a, a different approach to quarantine. It has been used before. Um, it tends to be used for small numbers of people. And also, we know one difference uh, with this virus is that there is uh, it would seem some ability to pass it on before people have symptoms or major symptoms. So I, th I think a different approach is, is sensible here. Well, just in terms of, so I know it's not you looking after them, so forgive me for asking almost questions as if you are. You've got to forgive me for that. If, if you were in charge here and you've got, what is it, 90 people or whatever, at the first, what happens after three, four days is they start to go stir crazy, right? And they, want, they, they, they may not be allowed out, but they're definitely, who knows, two of them might fall in love with each other, right? They're going to want to speak to each other. Now, are you quarantining them from each other, Tom, or are you just quarantining all of them from the rest of the world? Well, as you pointed out at the start, it's not me quarantining them. So I think you're, you're, you're probably asking the wrong, wrong person. Well, I'm you asking you what you would detail. do because this is your specialism. But well, my, my understanding is that they're going to be quarantined, separated from the, the outside world. But I think, uh, again, I heard, I, d I don't know how accurate this is, that, that things were being put in like 
Um, I don't know whether it was a pool table or table tennis. Um, I think people recognise that, you, you know, it's not a prison. I don't think the idea is to lock people in individual rooms for 14 weeks. Sure, OK, that's really interesting. So you, they can all have a game of snooker together, at least. They're not being separated from each other. I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not you giving know. you facts at all. You're asking me what my thoughts are, and that, that's the best I can give you. I mean, it is worth pointing out, we have not been in this situation in this country for a very long time. I think the last time we had any quarantining of this sort was in 1966, when uh, there was an accidental smallpox uh, release in the Birmingham area, an outbreak. And um, I don't think we've had this kind of quarantine. Uh, and even then, it wasn't the same number. So, you know, we're in, we're in uncharted territory. And I think you have to uh, give people a little bit of leeway for working out what they think sure. the best solutions are. Understood. So we didn't do it with SARS or MERS or swine flu. We didn't. With SARS particularly was, was deadlier, wasn't it? Why didn't we do it with that? Well, it's all it's it's all relating to the actual the nature of the disease and the outbreak. So you're right, SARS was deadlier, and the outbreak had advanced much more before we really knew about it. There were more cases in China, and people were spreading around the world who were who were very unwell. Um, we didn't have the same situation where we have a cohort, a group of people who are well, being taken from an affected country. Uh, back back to back to Britain. So, like I said, we haven't had this situation before. I think during um, during SARS, we did have individuals who uh, went under single quarantine, as you said earlier, just looking after themselves in their own house. Um, if if they'd come back or been at risk in some other way, but it was much smaller numbers. And we just uh, finally on the history of the word quarantine. I understand in Italian, quarantina means forty, and it, because there's something to do with forty days. Is that right? Yeah, so the, it was the Italians first worked this out um, uh, several hundred years ago um, when uh, people were turning up and rather than letting them straight into the city, I think it was Venice, um, uh, and they were worried that they might have plague, they realised that if they keep them out uh, uh, for 40 days, in, a, I think they put them on an island, uh, if they were well at the end of that 40 days, then they could be let in. So, And then, of course, we had, uh, in this part of the world, we had the ships uh, which would come to port. And if, if there was a worry about somebody being sick with, again, with plague or smallpox or um, cholera, then they, the ship would stay offshore for 40 days uh, or people would be isolated, again, to check that everyone was well before they were allowed into the country. So the principle has been around a long, long time. It's just we haven't used it in this format uh, until, until this episode. Thank you very much indeed. That was really interesting. I appreciate you're not, it's, you're not doing it yourself, but it, really interesting insights. Professor Tom Solomon, Director of the UK's Health Protection Research Unit. He's in the University of Liverpool and it is to Merseyside that these 83 British citizens are going.